Hello and welcome to part four of our four-part series where we've talked a bit about this question that so many men have, husbands and fathers have, about how do I lead my family spiritually? Uh, I need to take responsibility for the spiritual health of my family. I don't quite know what to do, how that can look. Uh, and, and a lot of you have asked for help in this area. And so we've put together a little four-part series just to get you started. We're not covering everything. There is more and we just, we invite and value your input after you're seeing these four. If you have more questions or if you're looking for more information, more help, then by all means, let us know. This is just to get some of the basic building blocks in place uh, to get you started thinking correctly and to get you on your journey. So we're finally at the point where we want to get to some practical things. That's usually what the men are asking for when they ask, what do I do? They want, they want the steps. And uh, today we want to give some practical things. So before we get to uh, some of those steps, what a family worship time could look like, I just want to say there should be two pieces that are already in place in your life. And both of these really matter. Uh, and I, I just want to open the video with these two things. Number one, you need to be getting your family to church. A connection to a local bodily body of believers is just of utmost importance. This is something that you can already do. Make sure you're getting to church, being committed to a, a body of believers and to the body of body life where they can grow um, and where you can grow as well and be challenged and held accountable and all of that. That should be in place. And number two, dads, you need to already be praying for your family in your own prayer closet. You need to be praying for your family. There's no way around it. If you want to take responsibility for the spiritual health of your family, be in prayer for them and for your wife. Do this daily. There are no shortcuts. You can't avoid these means of grace and just blindly hope that everything is going to work out. God has given you the mission and he's given you the tools for it. And those two should already be in place. If you're not doing that, I would encourage you to get on board with those two things and get started on that, that they are straightforward, they are basic, uh, and they are needed. So start with those two things. All right, then let's say you've heard these videos, you've looked at some of those scriptures and you are convinced, uh, I need to take responsibility for my family, for the state of my own household. Uh, I'm on board, I'm in, and, uh, and hopefully as well, you wives are on board, you're in, you've decided, I want to do this, we want to do this, let's go, I'm not sure what to do, uh, give me the steps, give me some steps how I can get this thing going. That's what we're finally getting to now, I know you've been waiting. Uh, so a few principles to remember as you go forward. Number one, start small. Just start small. 10 minutes is all you need. 10 minutes is all you need. You can do more as you grow, but you gotta master, master the 10 minutes first and go more. We can get this idea that we need to talk for at least an hour and there's gotta be a sermon and an offering and I gotta have this whole service and the whole thing falls apart in no time and we are discouraged. And we don't want that. Start small, let it be short, master those basics, and then, and then grow. Don't be discouraged. Don't have that idea that more is automatically better. You don't want to look for the harvest while you're still just planting, right? You can give your children, your wife, uh, a little bit of teaching at a time, and this is going to grow uh, over time as you repeat that consistency that we talked about how much that matters how important it is to be consistent Don't give them the whole Bible in one day. They're not going to get it Right, they're not going to be nearly as impressed with your skill and your knowledge as they are with your consistency and your love Be there for them and answer the questions as best you can uh, and just start small be there and be consistent don't try to give them everything all in one shot. It's not going to work. Be small, be joyful in your family, commit to it, and take little baby steps. So start small. You can grow as you get better, as the opportunities arise, or as you try different things, you can absolutely grow. But just keep it in your mind. I'm going to start small. I'm going to take a step that I can manage, that my family can manage. It's going to look different whether you have toddlers or whether you have teenagers. The seasons will change throughout the years and how you do things are going to change. And that's okay, so start small. Number two, be consistent, but be flexible. Families happen, right? There are things that are going to derail this process. So you pick a time, pick a time that is best for your family. Uh, morning, maybe right after supper, that's when we do ours, uh, or before bed. There's different times. Pick the time that you think is going to suit your family best and do your best to hold that line. Hold it and have that time. Uh, make it as sacred as you can. This really, really matters. 
But at the same time, you have to be flexible because families happen. Things are going to derail certain days. You're late home from work. Um, somebody, somebody is sick or uh, someone's gone to someone else's house for night and, and, and whatever. You're going to have different challenges. Don't let that discourage you. Know when to be flexible. Know when to let it go. The family worship time shouldn't be a stress-filled time where you're miserable and everyone is miserable because they know you're miserable. Uh, so be consistent, but be flexible. You're going to need, uh, need that flexibility as you figure things out. That's okay. So then the actual family worship time, what do you do, right? Gather the family together. We want a family worship time. We want a family devotion time. What do you do? You are the leader and so you've got to take it and lead. Uh, there are three things that should be a part of your family worship time. These three things, if you get them in place, you're going to be fine. And there will be many different ways that in which you can apply these three things. You're going to find that it's going to change. There are different options. All good. But three things should be in place. That is the word, prayer, and praise. Have those three things in place and you're going to be fine. So there should be some time spent in the word. Now this can be as simple as opening up the Bible and you, you pick a book and you're going to read just a couple of verses, uh, maybe a paragraph or something, right? Uh, remember, you don't have to go long here. Pick something, read something. We're going to read through the book of John. All right. Read the first five verses or so and talk a little bit about it. Excellent way to go about it, right? Then you always know what you're going to read next and you just slowly go through uh, something. So spending time in the Word there can be, can be one way to go about it. Uh, another resource would be a good devotion book which would give you a little more guidance, a little more uh, material. Uh, there'll be a verse there and, um, and then something else to read that would explain it. Uh, you can go, there are many good devotion books out there that you can get. Third option for the word is catechism. It'd be great to go through a catechism and memorize them and talk. All three of those are good. Spending time just directly in the word, a good devotion book or catechism. That's all great. Uh, we are in process of compiling a list of resources for uh, for you that you could you could look at. I've used all three of those over the the course of the years, uh, to varying degrees of success. I've had to drop some things and change things. It's changed over the years, but all three of the three of those are good. If you take one of those, sometime in the Word, you need that, and how that looks can be different. And uh, we hope to get a list together for you, for different age groups and different opportunities. Second is prayer, mandatory. There's got to be prayer during your family worship time. Pray for your family, let them hear you pray for them. It doesn't have to be long, it doesn't have to be fancy, but your family is going to remember uh, that their dad prayed for them. Uh, your wife's gonna remember that her husband prayed for you. Lead the family in prayer. You are teaching them how it's done, uh, and you could give them opportunity to pray as well, to give prayer requests or whatever it is, but be praying together as a family. Find some time to pray in your devotion time. And three is praise or thanksgiving. This can be spoken or sung. Not everyone is a singer. Uh, there should be a time of thanksgiving. We should always be returning thanks and praise, teaching our children to be grateful, to thank their God, to see his work in the world. When we have our problems, sometimes that's all we see and we don't even know what to be thankful for. We should be leading our family in thanksgiving and in praise. Um, Singing is great. I recommend singing if you can do it, even if you just sing the doxology, which is quite straightforward. We sing the doxology at our, at our place every night at supper time. And uh, you could sing the doxo doxology every day, sing it together, that's simple. Or the other great option obviously is the Psalter, which is something we really encourage. I'd really encourage you to pick up that Psalter that we use here at the church. Uh, the entire Psalter is online for free. You can find the music there, you can find the lyrics, and uh, you can learn to sing psalms of thanksgiving so if you have those three pieces that is a solid foundation whatever you are doing however you're going to make this look in your life if you want to lead your family spiritually you take responsibility for their spiritual health time in the word time in prayer and time in praise those three pieces so start small you're not going to climb the mountain in a day and that's fine little bits and pieces and it will grow over time this shouldn't be a stressful thing uh, some of you will struggle with this more than others, and I just want to put this out there too. There are men in this church that have done these types of things for years, for decades. Ask for help if you need. You've listened to these videos, you want to get going, you're still uncertain. Find an older man who has been doing this and ask him to help you. And he will, there are those who will be able to give you advice and to help you through. You don't have to go through this alone. So as we wrap up our four little video series, Building Blocks to Get You Started, 
Men, make the decision. This is something I'm responsible for. My Lord's help, I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to do it. Women, get on board with your husband. Delight in your man and help him get uh, onto the mission, in submission to it. Orient yourself towards it. Men, don't forget the peace of love, 1 Corinthians 13. We sometimes are so structured, structured and cold in the way we do our duty. It is a father's heart, remember that, a father's heart. Your family needs to know that you are for them. They need to know that you love them. Your wife needs to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you love her. That's gonna make all the difference in the world. And when you have those pieces, just get started. Just start something, 10 minutes is all you need and you'll be on your way to a journey that has such great blessing promises of God attached to it. Start small, be consistent, and go for it.